Hey everyone, it's Trey from Triggered Gaming, and welcome to my latest video. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down both the original OBS, which is an open broadcaster software, and the Streamlabs version, into what I feel are both the pros and the cons of each of them. You get to hear me now. First off, I've been using OBS for a little over a year now. I've used Fraps, NVIDIA Shadowplay, and other screams slash game captures. However, I've always stuck to OBS because it's basic to amateur design just feels right. However, I have had my fair share of bugs. Now on the other hand, for Streamlabs OBS, I've been using that for a couple months now, and I gotta say I'm quite impressed. Its design and interface at first glance seems more complex than that of OBS, giving me a feeling of a little bit more control and overall more options. However, it also can have its issues, and that's where the pros and cons come in. First, we're going to go over some pros for the Streamlabs version of OBS. So first up on the list, Streamlabs provides a built-in feature to add widgets, which provides less hassle when adding them via the browser source or whatnot. Also, you can view what the widgets will look like on the stream while just editing your overlay. Another great thing about this is it's Streamlabs that's making the widgets, so you won't need to make any stops to third-party websites and make it a little bit more hassle-free. Second on the list, Streamlabs connects directly to your YouTube or Twitch or whatever you're streaming through, which provides a built-in display of your recent events, whether it be real-time subscribers or donations or whatever that be. And you won't need to alt-tab to YouTube, which will save you some time, and you won't need to view these updates. You can simply just view them on the Streamlabs software. The third one on the list is both kind of a pro and a con, and it's that given the state of Streamlabs version of OBS, given that it's in beta, it's obviously going to have some of its issues and little bugs and minor problems and just little frustrating things here and there. But also you can look at it like because it's in beta and it already has all these cool features, it's kind of cool to think about where it's going to go next and all the cool things they can add from here once it gets to a fully developed version. Now we're going to go over some of the pros for the original OBS. So number one on the list is basically that OBS just feels more basic. It has less features and therefore feels more navigable by especially someone who's just getting used to streaming and gaming and all that. And I believe that if you were to just start gaming and you're just getting used to everything, this would be the way to go. And also it just gives you an idea of like what you're working with and then from there on you can advance to more complicated programs like the Streamlabs version of OBS. So number two on the list is basically just that OBS has been around longer and with that longevity it pretty much just brings a lot more solutions to its problems. You won't experience as many bugs and issues because they've had all the kinks and you know problems were fine and worked out. And also, if you were to come across a problem, you can basically just go on the internet and Google search your problem, and it'll be under some form under, under like Reddit or whatnot. You just got to kind of look that up, and mostly every problem's already been fixed or has some sort of troubleshooting behind it. Third on the list for original OBS is it doesn't demand as much CPU usage as Streamlabs does. Streamlabs uses more CPU because it has the widgets and everything going on in the background, whereas the original OBS doesn't have that going on. So with that, the benefit you can get is your graphics on your video games will look clear, and everything will run a little bit faster because your CPU is being dedicated elsewhere. And this is just a really good benefit for the original OBS. Now for some of the cons. So number one on the con list for the original OBS is basically that because I've been using Streamlabs for two months and I know that's kind of a short period of time, I haven't experienced any problems given like, you know, the software side of it. However, with the original OBS, I still have. And that's been around a few years, but yet I'm still experiencing some problems. And like I was saying in the pros list, like that shouldn't be happening because it's been around longer. But obviously I haven't been using Streamlabs enough to really find a whole lot of problems. So given that, I'm not going to hold it like too hard against them. But that is something to be careful. Like OBS just kind of has some kinks here and there. And now we have the con for the Streamlabs OBS. And that's basically just like if you're a gamer on a budget, it's kind of hard to run Streamlabs OBS because of its higher CPU usage. So it's kind of like, I guess, more inaccessible to like a majority of the public. However, if you are on a gamer budget, like that's where you would go to the original OBS because it doesn't demand as much. And obviously they're both free, but you get the most out of your computer if you were to use original OBS over Streamlabs because you have that less CPU usage and demand from the online broadcaster software. Now I'm gonna hit you guys with my overall opinion of both the battle between original OBS and Streamlabs OBS. So basically I believe that for streamers who are more amateur and basic level, I think the original OBS and its minimal and basic design is better option because it's not as complicated. And also if you are more tech savvy or rearing to try something complicated, I would go for the Streamlabs version just because it has more options and flexibility in terms of what you wanna do. So depending on your skill level is really which one you want to go for. As I've been streaming for a little over a year, almost two years now, 
I've obviously chosen Streamlabs OBS, and don't get me wrong, I was using the original OBS for like a year, year and a half. So I've definitely, you know, worked out some of my problems, and I've gotten a little bit more familiar with the online broadcaster software. So in my current state, I currently choose the Streamlabs OBS just because I'm a little bit more familiar with everything around that. And given my demand for, you know, widgets and a little bit more, I guess, enhanced options, I chose that one. Anyways, that's the end of the video, and as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment and subscribe, and stick around for after the outro for some more tech tutorials that I'll have linked, and also somewhere on the side of the screen, it should be a little bit, you know, a few of my gaming streams if you want to check those out. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later.